On Shark Tank, Barbara's probably most known for saying, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. But she's actually made 130 deals on the show, and one of them earned almost $500 million. But most companies on Shark Tank fail, and I'm trying to figure out which shark is the most successful. So I watched every episode where Barbara made an investment and ranked where each company is today. And the company's dead. Along the way, I figured out what kind of companies Barbara likes and what you could do to get her investment if you were ever in the tank. And to make sure she truly deserves the credit, I didn't include any deals where other sharks were involved. I started with Wild Squirrel Nut Butter, who makes peanut butter. We have been selling since February and we have sold 3,500 jars. Oh, they shut down last month. Interesting timing with this video, I guess. Still a couple jars left on Amazon though, if you're looking for it. So despite making a deal on air, Barbara never actually invested in the company. It turns out that reaching an agreement on the show really doesn't mean much. The investment isn't actually official until they go through a full vetting and negotiation after the show. And sometimes a deal is changed or canceled altogether. Wise guys never carry wallets. They carry their cash in broccoli vans, lay a rubber vans. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the broccoli wad. I don't know how you say no to that. You might lose your life. As I say, it's an offer. Hopefully, you can't refuse. No surprise, they're out of business. The good news for Barbara is this deal fell through and she's still alive. So after watching just a few episodes, I could tell deals were gonna fall through a lot. I have created a salad dressing seasoning mix. Last post is from 2014 and the website is up for sale and the company's dead. This deal also fell through. Not a very hot start for Barbara. Do you feel the need to free up your hands on your beverage? Well, bam! Oh my God. It's the only buckle on the market that can pull out the whole drip beverage. They still exist and this is a crazy visual. So Barbara offered the $50,000 for 51%, but didn't close the deal. I'm always left on my own to scale recipes down and convert odd measurements. And where better to put this than on their apron? What's unique is that it's printed upside down. In true Barbara fashion, the deal fell through. What's a booby pack, you ask? It's a top shelf fanny pack for your boobs. What? Barbara did a little bit of advertising for them, but uh, she never actually invested. Booby Pack is out of business. Southern Culture Artisan Foods. Looks like this deal wasn't actually closed. Zoom Interiors. Deal fell through as well. Boot Illusions. Another deal that was agreed upon that didn't end up happening. Ice Chips Candy. The deal never finalized. 50% of the deals you see on Shark Tank never close. Which means those entrepreneurs never get that money. But. It's not just the sharks that can call off a deal. Note Hall is a website that allows college students to buy and sell class notes and study guides in each of their college courses. That sounds like cheating. We're gonna make you $24 million in revenue in four years. What? It's I'll bet half my company on it. Wow, what blind confidence, I love that. Not blind. It's almost like he knew something that they didn't. Let's make millions. Let's do this. Yeah. I love these guys. <laughs> All right. You made a huge mistake. Barbara trying to invest in two handsome, strong young guys, which is a theme you're going to see a lot more in this video. But this time they pulled out of the offer because they sold it to Chegg.com for $3.7 million just two weeks later. That's a little bit better than the 90000 Barbara was offering. Sorry, Barbara. Dude, did she ever actually make any deals? If the agreement's never signed, Barbara doesn't own any of the company and can't make any money from them, but sometimes that's not the worst case scenario. Whoops, where's your child? Introducing the Ride On Carry On, making travel as easy as one, two, three. Attach it to your existing carry on luggage. Transport your child safely and easily. Fold it up and store it in any carry on luggage space. Now this is what I call advertising. All right, she actually completed the deal this time. So they kind of went out of business, but also reorganized the company. So trash bags and carabiners now. We always hear about the companies that are massive successes from Shark Tank like Bomba Socks or Scrub Daddy, but that's not reality for everyone. Our cookie kits make homemade baking easy and fun. We individually package, label, number, and color code each ingredient separately, making homemade baking foolproof. So all you have to do is supply the butter and the egg, and we provide the rest. All right, let's see. Since I've come on board, Scratch and Grain has over $400,000 in sales. 400,000 in sales? When a company appears on Shark Tank, they usually get a nice short-term bump in sales after the episode airs, but it doesn't always last. They're great entrepreneurs, but I'm counting on their natural talents to pull them through and hit that finish line, and I bet I'm right. Nope, she was wrong. They closed. Dee 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 dee. It's hard out here. Most companies, whether they're on Shark Tank or not, fail. And Barbara has said the same thing herself. I Not would true. say 80% of my businesses fail. Chill is uniquely low glycemic. It's organic. 
It has no high fructose corn syrup, no simple sugars. It's nutritious, it's light in calories, it has antioxidants, vitamins, but the best thing, it tastes like regular soda. It is good. What is the ultimate leverage of success for all players in the beverage market? I hope you know this answer. I don't know that much about the beverage industry. In retrospect, that probably wasn't a good sign. Sometimes it's pretty easy to tell which businesses are going to fail. Healthy beverage companies have done historically well on Shark Tank. Poppy comes to mind. They're a billion dollar company. But I've never heard of Chill Beverage, so probably not a good sign. I can't find their Instagram, I can't find the website, but this blog says that they're no longer in existence and Barbara lost all her money. So, another L. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, dude. With Meat Cheeks, cleanup is easy and tantrum free. Our wipes are plush, moisturizing, and best of all, they have a sweet, pleasant flavor. Dog. There is no way this is still out there. One of the ugliest websites I've ever seen. You can't buy it here, but it links you to Amazon. And it's unavailable. Sales went up 900% after the episode aired. So they did like $360,000 in sales. But like so many other companies on Shark Tank, it seems like they've just kind of fizzled out. Which means Barbara didn't lose all of her money, but probably most of it. A lot of times on Shark Tank, companies like Hoppy Paw will fail because they didn't capitalize on their initial bump in sales. One of Barbara's bigger deals, and the company is dead. And sometimes it's just factors outside of their control. Ryan's Barkery bakes and sells fresh, all natural dog treats. So fresh, they should be slapped. <laughs> <laughs> the last post was seven years ago. Other times, the company is just not something that's going to scale very well. Have you guys ever tried to take a family picture to only have them come out stiff and boring? They might have made some money along the way, but they're definitely out of business now. So, pink shutter. But what you'll see most in this video is Barbara has a very particular type of product and founder she likes to invest in. Sometimes it works, but a lot of times, it doesn't go over so well. So I can't actually show you the video of this one without getting a copyright strike. But basically, this guy Trevor has this supplement that is basically the pill from Limitless. And most of the sharks thought it was completely unethical, but Barbara actually liked it for some reason. Happy you're watching Shark Tank with sweet Trevor and I. <laughs> oh. That's why she invested. Barbara got the product into GNC, and it sounds like they did pretty well for a while, but ultimately, they went out of business. Handsome guys are definitely Barbara's weakness. Nick's Bikini is the world's first interchangeable swimsuit. All the parts of Mix Bikini are sold separately, and all the parts, they interchange with one another. The world has always been asking for a bikini company made by two dudes. Um, we haven't sold that many. We, we, we just launched a soft launch. So you're sales is zero? Not zero, but uh, very minimal. Yikes. I'm just trying to understand what the business model is. Don't you just want to license this to people? Maybe I do want to license this to somebody. I'm not sure. There are so many ways we can go with this. Well, pick one. We don't know. We're here. We're, we're, we're open to suggestions. This isn't even a real business. You have to have a business. We can offer capital. We can offer guidance. But we can't set the path for you. I'm not saying that Barbara only gives money to handsome young men because that's not true, but I am saying that handsome young men don't always do the best with Barbara's money. So Barbara gave them their $50,000 and they spent the entire thing on a party. No surprise, they went out of business. And the website crashed right after the episode aired, so they didn't even get the nice sales bump that most Shark Tank companies get. That's probably the worst loss yet. I know I'm making it seem like Barbara's taken a lot of L's on Shark Tank, and she has, but she sold her company for $66 million in 2001, and her net worth is way more than that now. And a huge part of that is because of investments you'll see later on in this video. In fact, she more than doubled her net worth with one of them. Barbara's been on the show since 2009, so some of those early investments are still paying her back today. Hotels across the country, daycares, all use these play yards, and they're impossible to clean. So I have created a slip cover that fits almost all standard size play yards. This company still exists. I mean, no traffic, but they've been around since season one. You can buy it on Target. Pretty modest sales today, but with that amount of time, I imagine Barbara probably made her money back and some. This is her. You take the medicine dropper out. You suck up the right amount of medicine, put it back in, and you would approach your kid, and you press the button. She says, one, two, three, open wide, and then she tells them a good job. And as you're doing that, you press it out in their mouth, and it works every single time. Why do they have cash on the desk? Season one was a very different time. Made a million dollars over a few years, so not awful. And then it looks like they sold the company, so 
Feels like they probably came out with a little bit of money at least and still buy it actually. Wow, they're only $69. Hmm, moderate success on this one. It's much easier to start an e-commerce business today than it was 15 years ago. So a lot of the companies that get investments on Shark Tank now benefit from that immediately. But even companies Barbara invested in back in season one are taking advantage of the internet and seeing a sales bump every time that episode reruns. I have a whole line of books and CDs that help children manage stress while promoting their self-esteem and a more peaceful sleep. Amazon is is my my biggest. Yes, Borders. Uh, Borders, Barnes and Noble. Damn, Kevin mentioned Borders and Barnes and Nobles. That really dates this episode. And it was one of Barbara's biggest investments, $250,000 for 50% of the business. The beauty of something like media and books is they last forever. And now that Amazon's more popular than it was in 2009, this investment could get better and better over time. Looks like the book from the episode is her highest selling one. She's got a whole line here. These books do 5 million a year in annual revenue. And Barbara takes in half the profits. After watching every pitch that Barbara's invested in, I realize she has a pretty clear formula for success that most of her winners use. Besides her most successful investment of all time, which are just a few companies away from hearing about, Barbara's best investments are products that people buy more than once, whether that's books or barbecue rub or even cakes. My daisy cakes are the best cakes that you will ever put in your mouth. Pause. They are my family recipes. They are made from scratch. We don't use any preservatives, artificial flavors in our cakes. And the best part, we deliver them to you. So I'm gonna take a flyer on this, but I am worried about getting my money out of a tiny little business. So every cake sold, you mail me a dollar. Yes, ma'am. Looks like they're still selling. I'd eat that shit. Dude, she made some money on this one. $8.5 million by 2020. Another big one. If a product is both good and consumable, it means they'll keep coming back to buy it, which means Barbara will continue to see returns on her investment for a long time. Name brand deodorants oftentimes smell pretty and last long, but they come with harmful ingredients like aluminum that clog the pores in your armpits and prevent you from sweating out toxins naturally. Hyperwi is the first naturally powerful aluminum-free deodorant that uses activated charcoal and magnesium to neutralize odor and absorb Moisture. Natural deodorant is usually code for smells terrible, which makes Piper Y the official deodorant of neckbeard Redditors. A lot of reviews usually equals a lot of sales, but they're doing even better on Amazon. Not bad sales numbers at all. Yeah, Barbara definitely made some money on this. There's just no way she keeps this hot streak up. Heath Hall and Brett Thompson struck a deal with Barbara Corcoran for their barbecue sauce and seasoning company, Pork Barrel Barbecue. Barbara, are you making an offer? I am $50,000, 50% of the business. We'd love to accept your offer. Now, five years later, we have over $10 million in sales in a pork barrel barbecue restaurant. We're in 5,000 stores with another 3,000 on the way by 2015. All right, this one sounds promising. You're telling me this guy's a professional lobbyist? Got a nice little website here. All right, the traffic's pretty low. But the sales on Amazon are pretty good. Got a whole line of products now. I'm not buying bacon on the internet, but uh, apparently a lot of people are. Fucking dog treats? It's disgusting. She invested 50,000 for half the business, so I think she made some money. And that's all that matters here. It's true that I'm only ranking these companies based off how much money I think they've made for Barbara, but many of these companies have been successful in other ways too. Melissa and Rick Hinnant made a deal with Barbara Corcoran for their fashion sock company, Grace and Lace. You picked the smartest person here, good for us. Let's see what they're up to now. It's been three years and we've just crossed $19 million in sales. We've been able to open seven orphanages in India and we have plans to open schools in India and Nepal to give these kids a very bright future. This one looks like a pretty huge success. Tons of web traffic, a million dollars in sales in their first five days after their episode aired, 85,000 five star reviews. They built a whole bunch of orphanages and Barbara probably made a ton of money, but I'm not sure that's the point. That's all that matters here. Yeah, I'm a hypocrite. Sue me. I'm happy for that company and I'm even happier for those kids. But let's see if people make some big money now. At Cousins Maine Lobster, we bring the Maine Lobster experience to Southern California and we do it via our amazing Gourmet Lobster Shack on wheels. We get our lobsters from shore to door in less than 24 hours. Here's the thing. Right now, we need to add another truck or two because frankly, we can't keep up with our own demand. Two handsome young men, a consumable product, you know Barbara's investing. When we pitched on Shark Tank in 2012, we only had $150,000 in sales. Now, six years later, we've done over $50 million in sales. Damn. 
Barbara's on a heater right now. Dude, they're all over the country. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, fifty-six. They have fifty-six locations as of May 2024. This is a home run for everyone involved. And Barbara's only gonna make more money from here. Pipcorn's delicious, all natural, and you guessed it, mini. Oh. Even better, <laughs> the shells are much, much, much smaller and more delicate. So say goodbye to those thick, hard pieces that get stuck in your teeth. Pipcorn is definitely still kicking. Traffic is not that bad either. Uh, they run Amazon. 4,000 of these have sold in the last month, and they have a ton of other products on here. Their little Amazon store is pretty nice. Other brands should take note of that. Sold in 25,000 locations as of last year. These guys are killing it. This one is definitely up there with the best of Barbara's investments. But this next product, is the one that changed everything. Many of the sharks argue that this is the best investment in the history of the show. And interestingly, it's not really something you need to buy more than once. You're just waking up in the morning or you're driving home from work. It's cold outside, it's nasty. All you want is to be warm and cozy. You know, comfy. It goes with you and keeps you warm wherever you are. <laughs> oh my God. The possibilities are endless and kids, they love the comfy. Probably know what you're thinking. This is just another version of one of those infomercial products. And well, maybe. Hopefully. It is. <laughs> Cha -ching! Cha -ching! Total Snuggie knockoff. Barbara, you have a deal. Okie dokie. Yeah. Let's get comfy together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys are Thank phenomenal you. sales Thank you. Let's see. They're online. That is some good web traffic. Shark Tank investment has made you the most money. That would have to be comfy, and they made me $468 million in three years. Holy shit. Oh my gosh, so it's kind of like Snuggies, but like the way better version. Don't dare say Snuggies. Oh, God. No, it's not as comfy. My bad, Barbara. This product went insanely viral, but they are running into some issues today because unlike barbecue rub or skincare products, it doesn't really run out, so you don't need to buy a new one every other month. It sounds like things might not be going super well today, but they made their money. Not only is the web traffic good, there's tons of sales on Amazon. And that makes this one of the best deals in Shark Tank history. $50,000 to 468 million. So for the sake of Barbara's investment, it doesn't really matter if they never sell another one of these because they already made a bunch of money. Barbara might be the GOAT. If you're not a handsome young man, I can't really help you there. But a lot of Barbara's investment strategy is just good business strategy. Make products with a high lifetime customer value. Keep customers coming back and buying more and make those products really easy to buy on the internet. If you like this video, I'll make another one for every shark and we can see who made and lost the most money. So let me know who you wanna see next in the comments and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video.